Okay, we're on the big black wire now, and uh, this one has got two things going on with this. Um, one is that it's going to go on to uh, the left hand prong here. Remember, this is with the black side facing up, so the heat sink is downwards. So don't be tempted to film with the heat sink up. So I'm going to attach this here, and then obviously I'll insulate it. And uh, that's going back to your battery, and then we're going to put a split in there. And uh, coming off that is the um, ground feed to the LED, which obviously is in the other shell half. So I'll do those two items and I'll show you it finished. Okay, just to illustrate how the MOSFET's been soldered now. And uh, I've got the um, ground from the battery going to this terminal here. And uh, I couldn't tell you which one of the three it is its name. Um, it tells you on the wiring diagram, which is in the instructions. It's a good wiring diagram, it's really nicely drawn. And uh, it's pretty much right. So I've got that one and then here I've put in another little three-way connection and uh, that now goes across to the Dean's connector that we showed earlier which goes into the other shell half here and runs off to the LED. Right, so I've been working on the MOSFET and uh, this is quite tight and there's not a lot of room when you're working on it. It's much easier in the Stampede than on some other blasters where there's less space. But here we go, you've got center pin is that blue one which goes back up here and uh, that goes on to the normally closed and splits off to the motor. And then we've got the left hand pin as you look at it with the black side up. Uh, that is your main ground from the battery and then coming off that you can see is the ground and this is just the feed to the LED okay so if you imagine that this connector is your LED if you're putting it in the grip you've got the black wire which is the negative so that goes on the short um, leg of the LED and then on the long leg you have another piece of wire with um, a resistor on the end and then um, we've got on the long red wire You've got a three-way join here where it splits. This piece comes down and goes to your trigger. And then if you imagine, that, sorry, to your arming switch. If you imagine this is the arming switch, it goes in. That's the feed into the arming switch. And if you're reusing the um, ordinary wiring loom, um, you'll have to work out which way around that is on the switch because they're not color coded. They're just both red. So that goes into the switch and then this comes out of the switch and then what we're going to do is we're going to put this one onto there like that so that's your resistor and again that goes to that same to the LED so that then your um, MOSFET last connection to the MOSFET goes on here on that right hand side and that means that you've then got your resistor and your LED um, between the um, gate and source which is correct and that should mean that your MOSFET will work and you won't get anything go bang Okay, so I've done all the final bits of wiring now. This might look like a bit of a bird's nest, so you'll have to bear with me while I straighten it out. So the MOSFET with the top side facing up, and we're going to go from left to right. So you have your feed on the left hand side, you have your feed here, um, your neutral feed from the battery, and then you take the neutral of your lead, which is the short pin on the LED, and the long pin is the positive. So short pin. Imagine this is your lead because that's the plug for it to go into the other side of the shell. So you've got short pin of your lead and the feed from the battery on this left hand side. The centre one you've got the blue wire which is going to go to the normally closed switch on your um, micro switch and then that will be paired out and go to the motor. And then over here on the last pin on the right you will have a couple there and this is where it gets a little complicated. Feed wire, you take your battery wire, look, your big long red wire which goes to your normally open. It's got a feed off of it here, which goes through into your arming switch and then out from the arming switch. This is where it's complicated. So it's a little bit tangled there because I've got to get it right. So this is the coming back from the arming switch. This is like the return and that's going in here into the MOSFET and then um, it's also going with the resistor underneath this red piece of shrink wrap is the resistor and then you've got the lead going here to the cap to the um, positive of your lead so positive side of the lead down here through the resistor and then spliced into the return feed from your arming switch now if you're not doing your arming switch you can cut out 
this part and you can just have it go straight this can just go straight this little feed can just go straight in here to the MOSFET and as long as you've got this LED and resistor wired between um, these two outside pins then your MOSFET will work now if we just plug this in um, it won't work because I have to plug the shell halves in but I'm just going to go and get the two shell halves plugged in and then all I've got to do now is glue down this obviously I've already marked the position so I've got that to do and uh, I'm going to do that in a minute and then once that's glued in it'll all work and I'm just going to show it firing um, with the power connected okay it's quite tricky getting everything to fit in with such a big shell so you'll have to excuse some of the wiring that's scattered around um, where I haven't fixed it into place but you will see over here um, at the edge of the frame here that's my connection and that is going to four C cells which is nowhere near enough to make this fully fire because it won't move the spring but the advantage about doing that is that I can then safely check all of this wiring here and I can't damage my gearbox with the, this low powered setup so first of all you'll see I'm going to turn on the arming switch and you should see the LED come on through the back of the blaster and let's just tilt that so you can see and red light and there we go this red light here move that back into the frame there's the LED look and that's your arming light and that stays on and then uh, if we imagine pulling the trigger you should see the bolt start to move forwards it won't move fully forwards because it won't complete the cycle on this pack so watch there you go moving forwards so that will then reset itself once you've driven it all the way back it will then reset the action and it'll go again so you can see that your motor is going the right way because your bolt is moving forwards and it's all moving fine on the rack and uh, you're not putting enough power through to damage anything so now you can fix your final switch in place with your epoxy or with your big blob of uh, putty if that's how you want to do it and then I've just got this piece to put back in place and then it's all done uh, here we have the completed installation and uh, there's just a few things that I've done as I've gone through to tweak it up. Here are the two plugs that go through to the other shell half and uh, you can see the MOSFET sits nicely down here in the trigger grip, in the, in the grip, below the trigger, out the way. And I've just put a little, few little dots of hot glue here and there just to hold the wiring loom in place to keep it away from the actual trigger. And I've padded the end of the trigger, I often do this because it reduces the throw of the trigger before it starts acting on the bar and uh, I think it makes a better trigger feel. This has got a set now, so I can't turn the blaster on for 24 hours. It's just started to set, and uh, it will be fully cured by tomorrow morning. So uh, I've bonded the switch in, and then I've put the switch cover back in place. Uh, BSUK like to hold theirs in place with a lump of putty. You can do that too if that's what you like. I just happen to have some um, faster setting adhesive, and I've used that. And then uh, here's the position here. If I want to put an additional stop in, um, to stop this from traveling any further down and putting pressure on the micro switch but it seems to be working okay without it so I've left that off and uh, then going into the battery tray uh, the instructions on BSUK say to drill a hole through the bulkhead um, of your battery tray and run the wiring through there but I never do I just use this hole here left by the springs and then I pop a little hot glue in there so that's it that's how you rewire your stampede and uh, as you can see you get a nice tidy neat and well rooted loom and there's very little extra wire cutting to do. I made life complicated by adding these parts here. If you're doing it quickly and you're not concerned about the aesthetics of your um, finished product, then obviously you'll just have your uh, one plug to your switch, or if you bypass your switch, you won't have that, and then you'll just have your LED sitting down here in the grip, and obviously that'll just sit down there like that, and then when it's on, then the uh, grip will glow a little bit. Um, but you won't see that because it's in your hand. All in all, I like this kit a lot. It does simplify things quite considerably. And uh, I'm pretty lazy when it comes to my mods. I quite like having everything pre-made. Um, we could obviously do with that longer short. That short wire needs lengthening by 10 mil, maybe a little bit more, 15 mil. Um, but other than that, this is a really nice little kit and uh, it works really well. Generally nothing that needs adapting too much out of it and you can recycle some of your original wiring. The only bits that I added were really because I like to make mine tidy. Um, you can wire it with just what's in the box but uh, I like to put my own little spin on things as I go and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video.